This May marks the anniversary of Arcane Studios' reboot and sci-fi masterpiece, Prey. So I couldn't help but make another video about why I love the game so much, but this time I'll be talking about the soundtrack. And from the opening notes of the score, it was clear that award-winning Australian composer Mick Gordon had once again caught lightning in a bottle. However, in contrast to the pulse-pounding adrenaline fest of Gordon's recent Doom soundtracks, the score for Prey is most likely notable for its restraint. In stark dichotomy to the no-holds-barred nature of the scores for Doom and Doom Eternal, the sounds of Prey are very deliberate and methodical. And that's not to say the scores for Aid and Bethesda's more recent Doom titles aren't deliberate, but that they have a more chaotic feeling to them. Fans of Gordon's more aggressive work on the new Wolfenstein's Dooms or Killer Instinct may have found Prey to be a surprising addition to his discography, and perhaps even considered him an odd pick for Arcane's psychological space adventure. But it was Gordon's work on Wolfenstein The New Order that originally appealed to Prey's creative director, Rafael Colantonio. Colantonio had reached out to Gordon and discussed his vision for the game and how he wanted to see some of Gordon's more arpeggiated stylings from New Order reflected in a possible soundtrack for Prey. A couple weeks later, Gordon delivered a test track that Colantonio called Sergio Leone Inspired and sold Colantonio on Gordon's involvement with the project. Here's what he had to say. The mix was so unique and so adapted to the mood we wanted to convey that it immediately felt like the right direction. I jokingly called the style Western in Space, and then we used that term as a filter for all the future music Mick did for Prey. And for those who may still be on the fence about Mick Gordon using his immense metalhead sensibilities on a thoughtful space sim, let me slap you with this quote from the man himself. I really love that sort of more artistic side of game development, where you can really take a moment to establish a melody. I like Journey and things like that. They're just absolutely beautiful and really cool. That's right, as confirmed to PC Gamer, our reigning lord of eight-stringed guitar-based demonicide loves Journey. Though perhaps that shouldn't be surprising, because A, Austin Wintry's soundtrack for Journey is absolutely jaw-dropping, and B, it's so jaw-dropping that it made PushSquare.com's soundtrack of the decade. But if anything should convince you that Mick Gordon is just a big softie, it should be this signed Doom album for Australian Brushfire Relief, where he drew little smiley faces on all the demons. But I'm getting off track. In the same interview with PC Gamer, Gordon talked about how his time on Doom had been, quote, focused on the very harsh, aggressive, and angry side of game development. And as previously mentioned, in Gordon's own words, Prey offered an opportunity to approach the more artistic side of game development. He explains it this way. It's more thought-provoking. There are more spaghetti western elements mixed in with synths and things like that. Arcane's approach hasn't been to get me to write a bunch of combat music or fighting music. Instead, Raphael would just give me a concept. He'll say, you're floating in space, what does that sound like? Well, that's great because I can spend two minutes working on what that feels like. Or else he'll say, you're sad, you miss your family because you're lost somewhere. He'll explain that and I'll go from there. But even amidst the tastefully echoed guitars and moody synthesizers of Gordon's space western, his trademark frenetic musicality still has its time in the sun. Standing beside sci-fi greats like Jerry Goldsmith and James Horner, Gordon delivers a brooding science fiction score, blending the best parts of old-school sci-fi soundtracks like Alien and Predator with modern production techniques to make Prey's score a worthy successor to the games and films that inspired it. Of Prey's filmic influences, prior to the release of the game, Arcane partnered with fellow Austin-based theater chain Alamo Drafthouse for special nationwide screenings of Duncan Jones' Moon, Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers and Total Recall, and the Wachowskis' The Matrix, though these influences are arguably more focused on Prey's thematic content than its musical content. Going by the track listing, the soundtrack begins with a blanket of guitar arpeggios underscoring The Experiment, Prey's main menu music. Various synths wander in and out of the listener's ear between the unendingly arpeggiating guitars, setting the stage for the alternate future sci-fi world of Prey. And from these opening strains, we're pulled into the mysterious world of Transtar's Talos One space station, carried through its damaged corridors by Gordon's thoughtful guitar melodies and adept musicianship. Other highlights from the soundtrack include the plucky piano tones of the tense Typhon voices, the Morricone-esque No Gravity, and the somber Alex theme. The latter of which, in my mind, perfectly captures the feeling of gazing out into the stars. Gordon's very deliberate guitar movements on Alex's theme capture an equal sense of entrapment and wonder. 
The claustrophobic space station and the expanse of the cosmos both find themselves represented in the listener's ear. A soft whir whispers through the track, like an alien voice gently trying to get your attention. There is also a track I'm absolutely sure is a tribute to Canadian prog rock trio Rush's 2007 album Snakes and Arrows, as Gordon's Human Elements builds off a melody of striking similarity to the ninth track on Snakes and Arrows, a song called Faithless. But Gordon has not yet responded to any of my emails attempting to confirm this theory. But the absolute highlight of the soundtrack may also be its most tonally dissonant piece, at least in regards to the overall mood of the game, for it certainly isn't dissonant sonically. In harsh contrast to the moody tracks of the rest of the score, the secret 80s disco anthem, Everything is Going to Be Okay, hits all the right notes, both literally and figuratively, as the backdrop for Prey's opening credit sequence. A light arpeggio and thick synth chords carry the player on a majestic helicopter ride through San Francisco. And this contrast was deliberate, according to Rafael Colantonio. When talking about developing the score for that sequence, Colantonio put it this way, I wanted the music to contrast with the rest of the music in the game. It's this big blue sky, a beautiful view of the city in a luxury helicopter, a position of power, versus being trapped in space, alone, vulnerable, and just trying to survive. So the music of Prey is a living, breathing part of Arcane's Talos 1 space station. In talking about his own compositional methods, Gordon has said that his work considers the role of music as a translation of the world in which it exists rather than a simple accompaniment, which I think can be seen extraordinarily well in the soundtrack for Prey, especially when considered within the larger canon of his discography. With only a handful of musical themes, Gordon delicately builds upon the world Arcane crafted, bringing out the soul of the station. Mick Gordon has proved time and again that he can craft a marvelous soundtrack, so plug in some headphones into your oddly geometric space helmet and enjoy the subtle synths and brooding guitars of Mick Gordon's score for Prey. This is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.